as you saw them at the time, how do you remember, what were the business goals that we set out to do? My career historically has been very heavily in fashion. I'm now a dad of two, um, and the goal was to was create a kids clothing brand that echoed some of the elements that I love about brands I love, high quality, sustainable, and to create something which is bigger and better than, than what's there today. Tell me about the big idea. Before you do, the one thing I remember is that both of us wanted to push the environmental purposeful bit further than anybody would ever pushed it before. And I remember getting to a point in a meeting where we said, that's almost got to go beyond the physical. We've got to push it into the mental. So explain how we did that. Yeah, so it, 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 it's, it's a more purposeful approach to to children's wear and it's using art-based prints as, as, as visual prompts. Um, the prints that we've used are, are, are not a traditional kids print, they're not, they're not a cutesy print, they're not, yeah. a, they're not a cartoon well, animal. They, I mean you could say they're disturbing <laughs> when, you, when you actually think about it. Yeah them. and the, the, yeah. the whole idea we took a lot of care to, to create images that are um, that the children would like to wear featuring some of their favourite animals, you know different characters etc mm -hmm. but hidden within each of these Prince is, is a is a, is a mean is a discussion to be had. You know, the dolphin, for example, has got a, a slightly entangled tail, um, and you know it yeah. could be the fifth, it could be the tenth. Where where the child asks why. Yeah. So in uh, simple terms, we haven't got a garment here. We've got the start of a conversation that is never normally had at that age between the wearer and the parent. Yeah, and the okay. big idea so, there is that this 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 next generation grows up with a, a greater understanding of our impact. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Let's talk about the challenges that were faced and the one thing that I will take you back to are those conversations where we described infant as something that we were going to polish so brightly that it will radiate attention. In other words, we didn't have the money for a massive launch campaign yeah. and we didn't even want the money for a massive launch campaign. Yeah. We wanted to do something that gravitated people towards it. What happened then? I think as any new founder, any new brand will find that the, the, the instant challenge is awareness. You, you're starting from a level of zero and trying to build that up. And we had some nice early success in, in PR channels and media, etc. But, you know, when it comes down to the crunch, you've got to have that daily yeah. traffic coming yeah. into a website. So what does that mean? Does that mean that sales just did not come through quick enough? Uh, sales that, didn't come through. Yes or no? Yes, yeah. They didn't? No, they didn't. Yeah. They didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we did a number of things. We did a, we did a series of pop-ups. Yeah. We did Box Park in Shoreditch, yeah. amazing. Uh, we did a pop-up month-long pop-up in Leeds, amazing. But yeah. one of the key things that we did early doors was 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 start to bring some complementary brands in, brands yeah. that echoed our own stance on sustainability yeah. and you know real brands champions. Brands such as Deja. Uh, we brought in Woodward, which was just got certified right. organic. You know, and these are brands that people are searching for online, and yeah. we we, so we leveraged that search. Is we it fair that. to say that without infant? Vesia, Woodward, Julia Lacoste, all those people wouldn't have come. That's very true. Yeah. yeah. So in other words, what shone brightly from this, what, attra what was attracted from that, at first wasn't that consumer, some, but not enough for it to be viable, but it attracted a whole host of other brands. And then, of course, you're into a situation where you're known by the company you keep. Exactly. Yeah. Sat alongside major brands at that point. Yeah, and I think and I a guess lot that's of, the turning point. Isn't yeah, it? a lot of brands will use will use retail, be that you know a self disassessment like that, to build equity in their yeah. brand. What we're doing is is building our own environment. Yeah. So in other words, two step approach. Yeah. Bringing a lot of other brands, sell them. This then radiates, it amplifies itself within there. That's it. it wasn't how we planned to do it. It's but, not. No. But it doesn't matter, does it? But it's been so, organic. Yeah, yeah. It's been organic. Yeah. It's really early days for this brand. People think brands are built overnight. We know that overnight successes take 10 years, mm. year into year two, there and thereabouts. Is it, what, if we would said, what's the success so far? How would you articulate that? Well, we, we, we're actually just coming up to the first birthday. Right. So literally one year since launch at the start of April. Um, and the successes so far is the fact that we are we're in a position today where we've we built a really strong brand profile. We've got yeah. more newness coming in with the likes of Foul Raven. Well, we're trading daily, aren't we? I mean, that's exactly, a, yeah. yeah. And I think what we've seen over time is that Infant has now become a, yeah. a repeat purchase for people that yeah, have, have been to the site and bought a pair of Age, for example, are now coming yeah. back and buying Infant. And, yeah. you know, we, we've spent a lot of time getting the quality of this product yeah. right. 
the, the, the only thing we can do is to get that product to people's hands. Yeah. So, so you know, it's gone from in 12 months, first half of the, the, the year, safe to say, right, and we sold anything, we might do two garments a week. Now we sell a number of garments daily. Yeah. We're joined by seven or eight high profile brands. Yeah. And tell us about the store. And we're about to open our store, so we are in the midst right now of, 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 of store set up. We plan yeah. to open in two weeks in the Corn Exchange in Leeds, uh, which is where we did our December pop up. Um, so it's a semi proven thing where people come in, found the brand, love the brand, and now we want to build on that in essence. Yeah. Super. And what's next? What is next? We want to launch a, a, a bigger, more robust collection of infant, yeah. which is so complete. going full circle now. Now we've got traction. And back again to the very thing we set out to do but the truth is we've got a business that's different to what we set out to have there was a fashion label but now the fashion label sits within a store yeah and i guess both our brands in their own right exactly yeah 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 i was waiting you know for a backlash from the greenwash brigade because and, and listen i also think as much as you passionately searched and I was shocked at the start how much time and effort you spent searching, not just factories, but then you went to see the factories to see yeah, if yeah. they were the real deal. Yeah. But even then, it's clear online, some people are never happy. There's always a factory better than a factory. And then there's someone saying, but you shouldn't be wearing them at all. But this transcended all of that. Yeah, and I, absolutely, I, yeah. The reaction we've had from some pretty hardcore environmental if I can say fanatics but I like them <laughs> that's, not, that's not a criticism they really have supported the concept of saying you've got to fight this battle in the hearts and minds yeah. it won't be won on the the, the integrity of the the organic cotton yeah. that's a given now isn't it but it's bigger this than is that. hearts and minds for the next generation it's really important yeah and it, this is exactly what we're about this is about it's about storytelling it's about yeah. building this, this this understanding and that's that yeah. as you say it does go beyond the garment but ultimately the garments have you know have, have yeah. a quality that will last well beyond the first wearer so yeah and that that one i mean the the people that have bought this i mean they're all over the world are they it seems to resonate with skater kids that's my view of it and and they look brilliant yeah. in it but a melting I love New York I mean it's heartbreaking in reality. It's a slightly raw image and I, one thing we found with the I love New York in particular is that um, we've got mums wearing it you know we've got adults buying into these range which yeah ultimately we're there to spark yeah. conversations for kids but which yeah. is great because it doesn't matter if an adult wears it a, a child can still see it the question still yeah. get asked the point is still there. You were adamant that you didn't want to illustrate these in-house you went and found a guy called Danny Passarella. Yeah. Tell us why you wanted Danny. I worked with Danny some years ago on another business um, and it, the, the Passarella brand has been around for such a long time and it has been a favourite brand of mine for some time but Danny has this unique ability to have really striking, um, controversial, but you know, simple as well. But simple yeah. ideas, people get it straight away and I think yeah. working with Danny, you know, over a long time actually through Covid and beyond, you know, we, we really refine this down and Danny brings a, a, a different a different approach and a different mindset, and I think that the, the two minds bring together well. The brand is cool as fuck, whichever way you look at it, from Danny Passarella through to the quality, through to this extremely important message that they carry. It's kind of 10 out of 10 on every front, isn't it? I wish you'd make adult ones. Adults, it's got to be on the road, Matthew. <laughs> it's yeah, got to be sure, on it. Yeah. Maybe, I actually, maybe. Because on a serious sense, I think you'll get supermodels wearing it. Don't think you'll have to ask them. I think you just put it under their nose. They will want to wear it. It's another... Fingers crossed. It's another... Yeah. You, you know, it shines bright, it radiates, it attracts. You, you make that in adult sizes, I think you will see high-profile people wanting to wear that brand. I hope so. And we shouldn't pay them. Yeah. On principle. Lots of talk about the wear of the kids. What what about the parents? What what it what do they have a responsibility to buy it or are they ever gonna <laughs> think about it that deeply? Well I think that they're, they're the parents are the, the people that are making the purchase and I think they've got to be on board with with the philosophy that we that we that we have in the sense of that they you know they they're accepting that difficult conversations may come their way, but they want to be part of that change. You know, having this conversation so these future change makers can develop their understanding. So I've just had a thought. You know what? Anybody watching this film that has got in their world 
that's got a grasp about what we're talking about and how it is genuinely, with all integrity, it really matters to us, doesn't it? Yeah. So for the right reasons, if anybody were watching this film that has got a contact with a supermodel, a celebrity, someone with incredible influence, we've met them in adult size if they want to get for involved sure, in that, yeah, For we? sure, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, brilliant. Well, I invite anybody to... Uh, just reach out on that front because it'd be, it's just nice to be nice as well, isn't yeah. it? And it's a yeah. good, good yeah. message. Yeah.